Zach Wilson prepares to make what is arguably the biggest start of his NFL career, while the Jets hope to go 2-0 within the division. I'm Glenn Naughton with JetNation.com. Be sure to log into JetNation.com where you can register and become a part of what is the most active Jets message board on the web. So Zach Wilson, I don't think this is hyperbolic, folks. I don't think it's an out-of-line statement. Is getting ready right now to play what really, up to this point in his still young career, right, is the biggest game he's ever played in for him personally. Because this is the first time we're going to see Zach Wilson in a situation, at least we hope, right? We saw the Dallas game last week. That was, I mean, that was um, a perfect storm of, of everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Whether it was what the Jets were doing on offense or what the Cowboys were doing on defense. You watch the game. The Jets weren't giving a lot of extra help to the tackles with the, the ridiculous Dallas pass rush that pressured Zach Wilson on 70% of his pass attempts. We didn't see the tight ends being used to utilize a heavy run game, which is what we saw in week one that worked so well against Buffalo. When Zach Wilson did have time, if you've had a chance to watch the All-22, the receivers were very rarely getting open. There wasn't a lot of, se- a lot of separation there. And that's something, sort of an underrated aspect of what the Jets are up against now. Because we know Alan Lazard, you know, was a guy that the Jets brought on because of his relationship with Aaron Rodgers. We know that Randall Cobb is a guy who came on board because of his relationship with Aaron Rodgers. Well, guess what, folks? Uh, Zach Wilson isn't Aaron Rodgers. And while Alan Lazard is a good player um, and Randall Cobb is a guy who's up there in age now, these are guys, you know, one of the things we've talked about with Aaron Rodgers is his ability as one of the best passers of all time to throw a perfect football, to put a football on a spot. How many times did you hear it? Just in camp and preseason with the beat writers, whether it was, you know, uh, interviews or whether they were doing TV or tweeting, you know, Aaron Rodgers just put the ball in a, in a window that we didn't know was there, put it in a spot nowhere else can put it. So you can, when you have Aaron Rodgers, you can get away with having receivers that don't create a ton of separation. But unless you are an elite level quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, which Zach Wilson is not, Having guys who aren't getting much separation is going to make life a little harder on you. So when you've got that 70% uh, quarterback pressure rate, when you've got guys that aren't creating separation, when you're not utilizing a run game to take some of the pressure off, as, as I was saying, perfect storm. A lot of stuff went wrong. Zach did some things right. Some of the stuff that we've talked about for a while now, or that I've been talking about for a while, we saw him, Zach Wilson, I said this during the game, I said it after the game, We saw him hang in the pocket and throw the football under heavy pressure more times in that game than we've probably seen in his career. And people, you know, I've had people say, oh, big deal. You know, the bar is low. The bar is kind of low or the bar is definitely low when we're talking about Zach Wilson improving because he was so bad. However, being able to do what he was doing is not a small thing. It looks small on film because it's not a highlight grabbing thing. It looks routine when a guy is doing it right. But. The ability to hang in there against pressure and not bail is a huge part of his development that was needed, and it's, it's, it's here. Now, will it stay? We'll see. But up to this point, that's one aspect of his game that's come along. But all of that, none of that's going to matter on Sunday against Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. And when I say none of that, I mean what he did last week. It's now about this week. And in facing Bill Belichick and the Patriots, this is a team, what makes this game so big it's not only that it's, you know, it's within the division, just have a chance to go 2-0 in the division. I don't, I don't worry about the standings, you know, week two, week three, week four. You know, a little later in the year when these things, when you can see what direction they're going, it means a little more. When the entire division can flip in one week on one or two games, I don't worry myself too much with that. But you do want those division wins. And you're, you're going to be doing it at home with what will probably be the most supportive crowd Zach Wilson has had in a little while. Because fans did get fed up with the foreplay, and they had turned on him by the end of last year. And I don't blame them one bit. But I think now the, the fan base, even without Aaron, without Aaron Rodgers, there is some a sense of you know some fans being re-energized, looking at this defense despite what happened against the Cowboys. The talent is still there. The players are still there. So Zach Wilson is going to be playing a division game at home with the crowd, not for long if he doesn't play well. I will note that. Early pick or a few three and outs, and they're going to turn on him. But Zach Wilson is going to have the crowd. He's going to be at home. Division game, a week to prepare as the starter with hopefully, hopefully a game plan that will be QB friendly and not leave him and the offensive line hung out to dry. And of course, New England doesn't have the pass rushers that Dallas has, but still, you don't want to leave these guys hung out to dry. You don't want to give Bill Belichick a chance to feast on a young quarterback 
which he has done more than any other coach in this division in in the head-to-head matchups, Zach Wilson against division opponents, he has been so much worse against the Patriots than any other team. It's it's actually it's kind of ridiculous. One the stat that jumped out to me, Zach Wilson to this point in his career has thrown 22 interceptions. Almost a third of those, seven, have come against the New England Patriots. So one team accounts for one-third of all of his picks. Seven interceptions and four starts for Zach Wilson against Bill Belichick. Coach defenses, he's completed fifty, just under 51% of his passes. So basically, completes half of his passes, has thrown seven picks against Bill Belichick, which is just really... To have one team dominate to that degree, and Zach Wilson, really, this opponent should be bringing back, you know, what happened last year. Obviously, the turning, uh, possibly what may end up being a turning point for his career, when he had that game against New England that, you know, everyone remembers, New England wins on a punt return late up in Foxborough, and Zach says after the game, after putting up three points, that he didn't let the defense down. Uh, I mean, he absolutely let the defense down. He acknowledged it later, but obviously it was too little too late. You had Robert Sala after the game saying, benching Zach Wilson is the farthest thing from my mind. And the next day he announced he was benching Zach Wilson. And I think that probably had a lot to go with, a lot to do with how those those comments went over in the locker room. And I would imagine some players spoke with Sala and the Jets had to say, let's cut this thing off and, and, you know, go in another direction for now. And that was the plan, right? Go in another direction. And one thing I think we're going to hear from the folks, because listen, this Zach Wilson thing, it's. You have those fans who see everything he does as being bad, and you have those fans who see everything he does as being someone else's fault when they don't go well, where, as as is always the case, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Zach's done some things well that don't fall on him when they've gone wrong. Zach has some things he's done terribly that 100% fall on him when they go wrong. And you don't want to hear the excuses from Zach. That was the you know a thing that really hurt him in the eyes of the fan base last year in the... It, after that game against New England was not only saying that he didn't do anything wrong and not putting up any touchdowns against the New England Patriots, but the fact that he said his struggles were a result of the weather. Now, I've talked about this before, not a, not at length as much as I would like to because you see it so much, but excuses versus reasons, right? Like those are two different things. And when, when fans like a guy, they'll let the excuses slide. And when they don't like a guy, they'll treat the reasons as excuses. And what I mean by that is, Zach Wilson, anyone saying Zach Wilson struggled against the Pats last year because of the weather, you're making excuses. Mac Jones played in the same conditions, was infinitely better than Zach Wilson that day. However, take the Dallas game we just talked about. 70% pressure rate with receivers getting little separation, that's a reason to, to not perform. Those aren't excuses. Like, you can't throw the ball being on your back. And you're sure as hell not going to have an easy time completing passes consistently on the run with the receivers not getting any separation. So you're going to tell me the weather is the reason why you didn't play well, but the other guy did. That's an excuse. And nobody wants to hear excuses. However, guy was getting busted in the chops every other pass attempt and nobody was open. Why didn't he perform? Well, that's a reason. And as I said, folks who love Zach a little too much, they treat everything as a reason when it's really an excuse. And it goes both ways. So for me, I don't want to hear about the weather from Zach Wilson if if there are bad conditions and he doesn't play well. And I don't want to hear from the fans who, you know, who hate Zach Wilson that if he's getting blown up and blasted in the pocket every every other pass attempt that he's not getting the job done. So he needs to be better, but the entire team needs to be better. The coaching staff needs to be better. And especially going into this game. Because again, division game against Bill Belichick, this is this is really you know, for those who say Zach Wilson hasn't improved, this is this is a, a, a you know, what what's the word I'm looking for? A, a benchmark moment, watermark moment, whatever you want to call it. This is a, an opportunity for Zach Wilson to go in and face the same defense and head coach, same scheme and head coach that has shut him down, dominated him since the moment he came into the league. And I'm not saying Zach Wilson's got to go put up 30 points. But if the Jets can score 17 points and Zach Wilson can get the offense into the end zone a couple times, that would easily be the best performance he's had against the New England Patriots to to date. And now it's a matter of what the Jets can do against the Patriots on defense. We'll go over that more tonight. Myself, Chris Schubert, Dylan Terriman on Jet Nation Live. We will be live tonight 
Check us out, join the chat, get interactive, ask your questions, share your comments, share your thoughts, because there's going to be a lot to go over. This Patriots short passing game is going to try to kill the Jets the same way the Cowboys did. And we're going to discuss that and more tonight. Jet Nation Live, tune in for that. Biggest game of your life so far, Zach. Let's see what you got.